Welcome back to Bows and Balls. I'm Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Not really, but anyway, I've been gone for a little while because I had three days, almost three and a half days with no power. So I figured that'd be a good video to shoot. Granted, I got a generator and all that. So, but I got caught with my pants down once, you know, in the beginning when I had snakes and we lost power and this is what I did. So grab a snake, grab a coffee, and uh, I'll do the same, and let's get into this video. My lavender albino girl, because somebody said uh, albinos can be uh, finicky and all that. And all my albinos eat great, not finicky. Well, and I'll pull a, a, an albino pied out here in a little bit. But anyway, everybody knows this is sunny, lavender albino. So anyway, let's get back to this uh, video of uh, what I what I did in the beginning when I lost power for the first time, and uh, freaking out, was worried about you know what am I gonna do about with my snakes, you know, and uh, what I did because they were in tubs already, and that'll be the first thing that I say is if you're in a big enclosure, I'd try to get them into something smaller. So that way it holds the heat, you know, better for them, you know. And that is another upside to a, you know, tubs and racks. These racks hold ambient temperature wicked compared to a glass or a PVC enclosure. And I'm not saying that tubs are the best way to go. I'm just saying, you know, that is a good part about having tubs. So anyway, what I do is I take heat warmers, the hand warmers or the feet warmers, and I stick them inside a sock. You know, I'll stick a couple of them inside a sock, and you might want to put more than more than uh, one sock. You know, with hand warmers in your tub or your enclosure. If your enclosure is big, you want more than just one sock with a couple heat heat. You know, uh, hand warmers or feet warmers in there, and tie the sock. Don't let your snake get be able to set right on top of that heater. You want to make sure that you've got some sort of buffer in between that heater and your snake. So I like to put them in socks and tie the end of the sock up so that way they can't get inside of it. And like I said, if you've got a, a, a big enclosure, like my CB70 tubs, I'd probably put two or three socks with a couple of, eat, you know what I mean, with a couple hand warmers or feet warmers in each one. And, and my V... Uh, VE6 in my smaller tubs uh, I put probably a couple I'd probably put two socks in there in the very back um, and I do like I said I would recommend if you got them in a great big enclosure it's going to be a lot harder for you to keep any heat whatsoever in it so I recommend putting them in something smaller you know to, to try to get because those socks will give off that heat and if you can try to keep some of that heat in that tub or that enclosure obviously it's best now maybe somebody out there can help me out i don't i haven't gotten my generator hooked up through my house through the panel in the house so i've been running extension cords this last time and uh when i plug my v uh, when i plug my herbostat 6 into the cord which i run a uh, GFI off that cord and then plug my Herbostat 6 into it, it runs for a very short period of time and then I get an error air code. So I can't actually run my thermo my, my uh, thermostat, my, my Herbostat 6, I can't run that off my generator. So what I did is I put an electric heater in here and I kept it 82 degrees. The ambient temperature in this room was 82 degrees. It's the warmest it's ever been. I mean, I'm running uh, 70, 73, 73, let me see it, 73 something, 73.4, 32% humidity. And see, that's why if I had PVC enclosures right now, I would be, like mist in every hour and that's why tubs work good for me and i people that t 
take my last video that I was saying that tubs are the only way to go, that's not true. I'm just saying that tubs are, for me are a lot easier to keep on point. Not one thing, but all everything on point. And that's all I was getting at. And obviously everybody knows, anybody that's got snakes knows that low humidity can also cause uh, bad sheds. But I'm, I'm stating that you got all your stuff on point, meaning your humidity, uh, the ambient temperature is right, the hot spots right, then they should be eating is what I was getting at. And if, and if they get poor sheds with good humidity, it's because they're stressed. That's all I was saying. And I'm not saying that tubs are the way to go. They're just a lot easier to keep on point. That's all, you know. Always going to be haters out there thinking that, you know, and I'm, I, I'm biased when it comes to that. Yes, I like my tubs for me because of the temperatures. Like yesterday, it was uh, 10 degrees outside. I had no power, you know, and these tubs work a lot better for me when I have no power because I can keep, I can throw some warmers in there. Like I said, a couple hand warmers or a couple feet warmers inside of a sock, a couple socks, depending on how big of a, you know, tub you've got or a rack you've got or an enclosure. If you've got a big enclosure, you're going to have to put a lot more of, of the socks in there, obviously, you know, to get your temperatures up. My channel is not for breeders. I'm not expecting it. Most people that watch me aren't here for breeding information because I'm not going to go over that here. There are plenty of videos out there of this morph and that morph. And I, I'm just here to get people comfortable with their snakes and to share my, my experiences that I've had over the four, four and a half years of keeping snakes. And for the, I've had... I had uh, 13 babies, sold five, so it's not like I got 35 snakes at, because I produce babies. I sold five and I only produced 10, 10, uh, 13 babies in all, so, and I've only got like four of them. So you tell me how many snakes I've had for, you know, over four years. It ain't because I just had a bunch of clutches and I've got a bunch of babies, no. You know, and I'm just talking off my experiences. But that's what I do when the power goes out. I, you know, not now because I got a big generator and it would run my whole house. I just got to get it. I got to get it wired into my panel and in, in here, and then I could run everything. It would. I wouldn't even be like we didn't have power. I could turn a flick a switch and the light would work. But for right now, I ran an uh, electric heater in here, kept the ambient temp and. I, I'm sure they would be fine at between 70 and 75 degrees. You know, watch the weather. If you got bad weather coming, do not feed your snakes. I knew that we had bad weather coming, so I didn't. I held off and I didn't feed any of my snakes. I never feed any of my snakes if I know that we have bad weather coming or a storm. I'll wait till after the storm passes to make sure that I've. I, they have the right temperature to digest their food. The worst thing that you can do is feed a snake and then have you have the power go out. You know, and I understand it's not a big deal for some of you people that that live in them warm states to go and have, you know, power go out. But here in Maine, I mean, when it it can be 30 below zero in the winter time here, which it is winter time, obviously, and. Uh, it was cold. It was cold for three days. I mean, I was lucky that my pipes didn't freeze because I just had that electric heater with this room blocked off. So it was just heating this room. And then I had a propane heater, a propane heater uh, in the, uh, a propane heater out in the, in the main part of the living room. No, I'm gonna have to. I have to pull her, pull this tub to get her out. All right, girl. Some of the things that you gotta deal with when you get snakes. I don't think she's gonna fall. I hope she don't fall. No. Hopefully she stays. And see, it's just reach in. I was scared to do that in the beginning to reach in and pull them out of the air. I thought for sure they'd get mad or something. But 
nice and slow. Oh, she's trying to come back out now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so anyway, I had a propane heater in the that was heating the rest of the the rest of the rooms in the house. And uh, yeah, let's pull out an albino pie because they can be so moody and stuff, you know. I heard the same thing. The albinos ate ate bad, and they can be moody and all that. But you see, all mine. I don't have a moody one. They all eat fantastic. I mean, you know, I, I like it when people like to tell you about how how you, snakes are gonna be that you own, and uh, you can see. Yeah, she's she's horrible. All my all my albinos eat great. I heard the same thing in the beginning. The albinos can be finicky eaters and all that. My albino my albinos eat. All my snakes eat. They eat great. They eat amazing. And uh, yeah, a little attitude, huh? No, not at all. I don't think so. You know, if somebody's thinking about getting an albino and they heard that they're they're mean and stuff, send them over here. They can watch my uh, videos. Of my albinos. You know, we'll, we'll take another one out here because they're so hard to deal with, you know. Oh, bad attitudes, you know, wicked attitudes. Can you see that? Oh, yeah, wicked. Oh, horrible. No buy now, Inchy. 100% head clown. Eats awesome. Oh, well, they're so, so ornery and and bad i can't hang on to two of them in one hand you know because they're just they're just horrible and they're, they're so mighty look at them i'm so afraid but, but anyway so we're just gonna sit here with these albinos and let you see how how weird how they can be and you know can not good eaters these guys eat amazing you know, I've had this guy four or four and a half years. He's amazing. I'm not talking about, it's not like I don't know what I'm talking about. When I'm talking, I'm talking about my snakes. All my snakes. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, I had propane heater out in the other room and I had uh, that heater in here, kept it about 82 degrees, the ambient temperature. Um, it was completely dark. I hated that because my snakes, I always have lights in here going during the day and uh, I have uh, and I turn them off at night you know I give them a day and night cycle um, but that's what I did that, that's what I do when the when the power went out and I didn't have a generator I got myself a bunch of hand warmers and feet warmers and uh, well look that's so horrible so horrible Oh, 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 it's, oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. They, they're so moody, you know? They're so moody. Oh, horrible, man. But, yeah, so. Hey, thank you for all the new subs. I really appreciate that. And I really do like the comments, whether they're kind of negative or not. It, it, I always am willing to listen to other people's opinions. Because I do realize your snakes are going to be different than my snakes. When I'm talking about stuff, I'm talking about the experiences I've had with my snakes. I'm not talking about snakes in general. I'm talking about my snakes and, and what I've seen in my snakes. And I've seen, I know plenty of people that have snakes. If you've got snakes and you own snakes, you're going to run in and you're going to hang out with other people that like snakes and, and chit chat with them. I know because I've talked to other people that have snakes. We don't all keep our snakes the same way, you know, and that's fine. And PVCs can, PVC and glass can work fine, but they're a lot more work to keep everything on point. That was what I was getting at in that last video, you know, and most of the time when a ball python goes off food, it's due to stress. You know, it's it's due to stress, plain and simple. And most of the time, it's due to husbandry. 
you know, the enclosure, the way the closure is. And I, like I said, if they're not eating and they're having really bad sheds and they're roaming all the time, then you need to get that dialed in. That's all I was saying. I didn't tell anybody to take it out and you need to stick it in a tub. I said if it goes off food for months and you're worried about it, try sticking it in a tub. And I told you, I'm almost positive that I would almost bet money, and I'm not a better, but I would bet your snake is actually going to eat. You know, and the comment that I got last night was awesome. Somebody hit me up on Instagram and sent me a comment and said that because of my videos, his seven-year-old daughter is actually getting over her fear of snakes and she is actually starting to enjoy her snake because of my videos and that's exactly why I shoot these videos because if I can help at least one person and one snake to get have what I have with my snakes which is you know uh, do you see me hanging onto these guys keeping them here that like I said they move around but they're not trying to get away now, if you've got your snakes out and you'll know when they're trying to get away because you won't be able to just sit here like I am here because I'm just, I'm just supporting them. I'm not keeping them here. Now, albinos. Now, and I, hey, you, you said it yourself. You, this other guy said it in his comment that albinos are known and albino pides are known to be you know, finicky and can be kind of, can't remember exactly what the way he worded it, but you can see. And anybody that's seen, I've got plenty of albino stuff here, and I've got albino pides, and i got pied stuff. And everybody can, will tell you, mine are amazing. They're super sweet. Super sweet, you know? And I always have experiences like this when I have my snakes out. They're not just behaving because of the camera. You know, they're not like a kid and you take it somewhere and they're on their best behavior because they're away from home. <laughs> my snakes are acting like this because this is the way they normally behave when out. You know, and I take them out all the time. They don't live in these racks. I'm not a breeder. I had three clutches. So let's get that straight. I'm not a breeder. Yes, I have bred to, to produce babies and see if I could do it and, and try to sell them. And yes, I sold some babies, but I'm not even breeding this year. I might not ever breed again. Seriously, I might never breed again because that's not why I got into this. And anybody that's getting into these snakes because you think you're gonna be a breeder and you're gonna make buku bucks and it's gonna be easy and all that, uh, good luck. That's all I got to say. And I'm not going to shit because it's somebody that's got ambition and really wants to do it. They can, they're going to do, make anything they want to do work. But if you're going to go into it and you're not going to put everything into it, you're going to sell a few snakes, but you, that's probably about all you'll ever do. And I was fine with that. I don't care about being big on YouTube. I don't care about being a big breeder. I, I, yes, if I breed snakes, I would really hope that there are people out there that would want my snakes. You know, I, I'd be foolish to say I wouldn't. Obviously, if I produce anything and somebody wants it, that makes me feel good. You know, but that's good enough for me. You know, I'm not in it for the money. I would like to put some money back into my snakes and whatever I make off my snakes, I put back into my snakes. The money that I that I got for selling those snakes, I put back into food. I put it back in there. I bought a rack. You know, I mean, I put it back into my snakes. My snake money goes back into my snakes. You know, I love these guys. I do. Hey, let's pull out another pie. Huh? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's pull out another pie. No, I am going to put one of these guys back. So. <laughs> Just because. Oh, this was Blaze, the albino Enchi, 100% hat for clown. I might have to put her back first. Yeah, let's try to put her back first. And what do we call her? Oh, we don't have a name for her yet. 
Anybody got a name for an albino pied female? Hit us up if we don't already have it. For a name? You see it, nice and slow. Well, that's, that's when you know that you're getting there. You know, when they go back nice and slow, they're not running back, going fung. Because, yes, I'd had a couple in the beginning. That, that's just the way they went back. All right, let's put this albino back. And thank you, everybody, for not hating on me too bad for that last video. This guy just, he just wants to stay out, I guess. All right, screw it. I'm not going to make you go back because we don't do that here. We don't force our snakes to go back. You know, some of my boas I, I do, but that's just the way those boas are. Can you see? All right. Oh, my God. This pie, she, it's a pie. We better be careful. Oh, man. Look at that. That was so bad, man. She was so ferocious. Eats awesome. Has never refused a meal. Oh, man. Look at that. She's so ferocious. Oh, she's wigging out. She's freaking out. Look at her. I'm being sarcastic. A male and a female. I keep all my males and my females in the same room. They don't go off food during fruit breeding season. The three males that I bred that actually took, they eat late clockwork now. You know, this is when basically, you know, this is about breeding season right now. So, and, you know, oh, they go off. Yeah, they can go off. They can go off food when they're breeding. And yes, my snakes, when they went into, when, when my females started ovulating, they went off food. And they did not eat again until after they laid their eggs. But they went right back on food. Because I'm going to do a video on that. How I got my females right back on food three days later. All three of them. And it was information that I got from somebody else. Somebody else, his video is how I came and, and I tried it. And I got those three females to eat three days after laying eggs. So I'm going to shoot a video on that here. But I, like I said, this isn't really a breeding. I'm not a breeding channel. You know, it, breeding is easy. It was for me anyway. You know, it, it, it depends on whether, it, as long as the snake gets knocked up, after that it's easy. You know, as long as they don't, you know, have, get egg bound or, or something like that. You know, she's so finicky. They're so finicky. Oh. And this isn't a girl that I hold all the time because I do have other snakes that literally I just hold all the time because I have to. I open the tub up and they're coming right to me, you know, and then I, then I hold them. But once they're out, they're not running away, you know. There's a difference between them wanting to come to you and hang out and then there's that they're coming to you because they want to get out and get past you and all that. You know, they're not just wanting to hang out. See how she's moving nice and slow and she's just moving around? That's not her running. I mean, literally, when I say Cleo was running around and trying to get away from me, literally, I was hand over hand having to, you know, hang on to her because she was moving around that fast. You know, I'm trying to show what both of these guys are doing, but I'm having a hard time doing it. Because his head somewhere, you know, over there it is. It is his head. But, you know, pides, albinos, albino pides, they don't seem to matter. I, I, they eat just as good as my other snakes. So somebody says, tells you that albinos don't eat good and they can be, you know, defensive and all that. Cause I heard the same stuff in the beginning. I almost didn't get one. And then, you know, the guy, the breeder that I bought, bought, you know, Blaze from, my albino, inchy, 100% hat clown, told me, he says, oh, he seems to be fine with being handled and all that. You know, and I brought him home and he was, he's, he's been an awesome snake. All my snakes have been really awesome from get-go. Yes, I had, I got that defensive bite from, 
from uh, my clown. Yeah, we'll put her back. And take out a boa. I feed like 17 snakes tonight because I held off feeding. We lost power at 9 o'clock, 9 a.m., uh, 11 a.m. Tuesday morning. And we just got it back last night at like 10 o'clock. Oh, I want to show that she's going back nice and slow. Huh? And you tell me where the, that she's stressed and, and, and you know. Well, let's just go. Shh. Yes, I could stick him right in there, but... I want to show this is a snake relaxed and going back in his enclosure if anybody really needed to know that I mean well there are some things that I'm not gonna that I'm not gonna focus on and talk about because I find some of it is just common sense like the whole old bad low you know bad humidity low humidity can cause can cause you know sheds in pieces I mean if people really don't know that already you know I, I'm talking to people that I figure you know have some somewhat of a concept already because most of us I hope all did research I researched for a year and that's how I came to the realization because I'll say it right now I was gonna go PVC I was gonna go glass in the beginning because I thought that was best because that's what I had in my head you know but me being scared of snakes I wanted to give myself the best opportunity that I could to make sure that I kept my snakes not stressed because the research I saw that a happy unstressed snake is a relaxed snake and relaxed snakes aren't known to be bitey and and temperamental you know and that's why i was like and the more i researched i realized here in maine and because of the temperatures in the winter time that racks and tubs were going to be best for me that that's it that's not because i think racks are better than pvc or anything like that for me where i live racks are best for me that's all i was trying to get at and i was trying to explain some of the the problems that when i researched that people ran into they were running into poor sheds because they couldn't keep the ambient the the humidity up high enough for the sheds and we all know that if they haven't if they not the most comfortable in shed period whether they whether they, the temperatures in the the humidity is a spot on. It's still not one of their most favorite times. It's uncomfortable. So if you've if they're already uncomfortable and you've got low humidity and all that, you're just stressing them that much more. To me, my opinion, you know. And I didn't want that. I wanted good every yeah, good interactions every time I took them out. And the more I research, I researched for over a year before I got one snake you know i'm not one of them people i go grab something and i bring it home i'm a forever home until it is deceased and it dies and, it, and it's not here i am a forever home you know babies that i produce yes i went into it knowing that those were going to be sold and i was going to try to get rid of them all my snakes that i bought all these snakes that i have i bought as pets i didn't get into it to breed and yes, maybe I went a little overboard and getting, you know, as many as I did. But that's on me. I'm still taking care of them and I'm more than happy to do it. And I'm more than happy just having them for, you know, pets. Because that's why I got into it. You know, I got into it for pets. I didn't get into it for any other reason. You know. Who do we want to take out? I want to take Dunos out. Let's take Dunos. Let's take Roxy out. We'll take Roxy out. I think she eats tonight. She does. You see her right there? You see her? What's she doing? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Huh. What? 
what it, how it is, what it is good for, and I fucking totally messed that song up. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Whoa. <sighs> what is it ever good for? Here we go. I'm sorry for swearing. I didn't realize that guy said his daughter's seven years old, so I do try to keep my mouth good because I do. I swear like a parrot and the F-bomb is my favorite word in describing anything. I bet I had somebody, I had a conversation with a friend of mine and they taped me and I think I said the F-bomb like 52 times in like 10 minutes. And it might have been more than that and they all thought it was hilarious. I'm a carpenter at by trade not anymore because i got i had i got messed up my back and had to have back surgery well, may with me people i'm trying i'm trying this is roxy by doom rose boa i do recommend anybody tap training you know and if if you're new to snakes and all that and you don't really know how to read their body language and stuff I'll be the first to say definitely tap train your snakes your ball boas and your retics and stuff like that and There's no really need to tap train a ball python. I mean you can if you want, but there really is no reason to You know, I mean I I don't tap train any of my snakes. I don't tap train my boas I don't tap train, you know nothing you know, but I know how to read my snakes. And if I open the tub up and I get, you know, and they give me that look, or I know what to look for is what I'm getting, what I'm saying. And uh, I always say, do as I suggest and not as I do it when it comes to my just reaching in and taking my boas out. I know my boas. My, you know, my boas are used to me now. You know, we have a good, good relationship, me and my boas, as you can see, because she didn't even move when I opened her tub up. I'm going to lose my head so you guys can check her out. I just want everybody to have experiences that, like, I have when I take my snakes out. Because I know, overall, this is what people want. You know, people want snakes that are acting like this. I would, I'm assuming. I'm assuming that's what everybody wants. You know, I'm assuming everybody wants interactions like these. Not, not, you know, chasing their snakes around or, or, uh, coming down. Chasing their snakes around or, uh, you know, worrying about being bit. I, I did not want to be bit. You know, and yes, I knew that it's a chance that, that it's going to happen, you know, but I was hoping that as long as I treated them right and I kept them stress-free as much as possible. And like I said, the three things I go on, as long as they're eating, they're not roaming around constant and they're shedding full sheds, you're on point. Those are the three things that I watch for to tell me that there's something wrong with my snakes. Because those three things, when those three things are off, the temperament and, and the demeanor is going to be different than normal. And that's the other thing. You, you know, once you get your snakes, you'll get to realize, you know, how they normally act. And you'll know when they're acting different, you know, and they might just be acting a little different because they it's, you know, food time. This girl gets fed tonight. She, you know, she was one of the ones that was supposed to eat Wednesday night and we didn't have power. So I wasn't, I don't feed. I, and I won't feed before a storm. Do not feed your snakes before a storm, people. If you know a storm's coming up, wait till after the storm passes. It's not going to hurt your snakes a bit, you know, and uh, just, yeah, just, go and, and wait till the, the, the storm or whatever issues, you know, might be coming up, goes by and then feed your snakes. You know, I actually had my first snake that I sold, the girl messaged me, 
Tuesday night because she was all worried because her house got down to like 65 degrees and she wanted to know if there was anything that she should do with her snake. And because she didn't have power and she didn't, you know, she doesn't have a generator and all that because she wasn't really f thinking about this stuff. And either was I, you know what I mean? Trying to do everything perfectly. There's still stuff we're going to forget and not think about. And that this is one of them. And so I told her about the sock thing and the heat warmers, you know, the the hand warmers and the and the the feet warmers and putting them in a sock and tying the end of the sock up. And she's in a tub, you know. And Danielle's having a wonderful and awesome experience with her snake. She takes it with her in the car. She takes it to work. She's at vet tech. She takes it to work and shows all the girls off. Show shows her snake off to all her girlfriends at work on her days off she doesn't bring it there when she's working and and make it sit there all day but she takes it into work and she takes it out she, all, all this summer she was taking it this everywhere with her and it was fine it is eating it's doing all them three things that it should be doing even though she's taking it everywhere with her driving around in the car she goes to visit her friend for a little bit she said she might take her snake with her sometimes you know she didn't take it shopping and stuff like that but she did say that she would take it to go visit her friends and stuff and i think that is awesome because her snake is having a wonderful life no it's not normal for it to want to go you know go in the car and all that but hers is so so uh chill and it trusts her to where she can take it anywhere and that snake does not care because he feels safe with her. And that just goes to prove that snakes can feel safe with us. You know, and, and if that's all that we get out of it is that they feel safe and secure with us, then so be it. Who I don't need them to love me and, and kiss me and stuff like my dog. You know, just them being the way they are and being, you know, great temperament and, and not bitey and can do whatever I want with them and it's never an issue. You know, you see this girl trying to get away, but did you see how slowly she was trying to get away? That was not Cleo. Cleo was not trying to get away slow like that. I'll put her back. But you're always going to have haters no matter what you do. And uh, I just I just say proof is in the pudding when it comes to my snakes. Anybody that, that, uh, look, look how nice and slow she's going back. Anybody that tells you that, you know, you go by your own experiences off your own snakes. You know, and realize not everybody's snakes are the same, and that's fine. But all 35 of my snakes are the same. Are the same. Here we go. We're going to take them out. Uh, I'm going to just reach in and take her out. Jesus. Should we do Raven? Should we do Raven? My wild caught Guyana. Reach in. Take her out. No way. Should we do that? Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. Look at that. Horrible. Horrible. What? Wild caught Guyana. Yeah, you tell me that your bow is at like this. Most of them don't. Most of them are runny as hell. Always trying to get away. All moving around really fast and all that. Look at my girl. You know, and, and the longer she's out, the better she gets. You know, she's not going to get runny in the nest. What, right in front of my face? Well, why? Because I got good experience, you know, with, with my snakes. I have wonderful experiences with my snakes. Now, look how nice and slow she's moving. I know, I've watched plenty of boa videos, and they're not like this. They're like all over the place. And I like watching Brian's boas and his snakes. His are all over the place sometimes when he takes them out. Look at my girl, wild caught Diana. You know? Yeah. 
you you want to you know when somebody tells me you know how these snakes are and how they act and this and that i just take it as that's your snakes because i'm not getting any of that with mine and my people that actually watch my videos didn't just tune into that one video about you know here come the haters it, it, you know people that tune into that one video and like to say give their two cents about albinos and pies and all that watch my videos because my people that watch my videos when when people leave comments like that if you guys aren't second guessing and going what is this guy talking about look at his albino pies look at his look at his albinos they look wonderful. They're not. Their temperament is great. Look at his wild caught Guyana. Oh my God, yo! You tell me, yo! You tell me my snakes are miserable, yo! And you tell me that yo know, albinos are horrible. I don't have one. I got more albinos I can pull out too, yo! Know? I can pull more albinos out, yo! Know? Look at her, look at her. This is normal. This is the, a normal, a normal handling session with my girl Raven, wild caught Guyana. And yes, I'm not. I'm only boasting about how docile she is. I'm not boasting that she's wild caught, because anybody that's watched my videos before, and I'll say it now, because there's gonna be the video. Those people that just now tuning in, and. I did not know she was wild caught when I purchased her. Yes, that was my bad. But I didn't realize that you could get wild caught animals anymore. I was thinking that they all were captive bred now. And I didn't find out she was wild caught till she was already in the mail. So Raven's here and you see how Raven is. You know, and I didn't ask anybody to go get her out of the wild. She happened to already be up for sale. So let's get that straight too. I didn't go out and say, hey, go take, go get me a Guyana boa out of the wild and send it to me. No, I happened to come across her in, a, in an ad and I messaged, and it wasn't Morph Market, obviously, because Morph Market doesn't allow, you know, well, they do. They do allow wild caught snakes to be sold, but, yeah, watch. I'm going to come over along this side so maybe you can tell, see what she's doing. She going because sometimes she'll go right back and sometimes she won't. No, she's outside to tell me she do this. I like just she's fine, she doesn't even want to go back. Obviously, see that, and it's not because she's miserable in there, it's just because she's more than content to be with dad. That's why, right to my face. See? I trust her and she trusts me you know and she trusts me so anyway I guess this video has been long enough but anybody that has any questions or wants to know my opinion or you know how I how I do things feel more than free to send me comments I like the comments you know even if you got a different opinion than mine, I'm I'm fine with that. And and I was fine with all his opinions up till he tried saying that albinos that can be finicky and known to be. And with all the albinos I have, I'm sorry. I just it 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 does not pertain to me. So you know, and it doesn't pertain to any of my albinos. They all eat wonderful. They all have awesome temperaments. I don't have an asshole. I really don't. All my snakes are just as chill as this wild caught Guyana. Seriously. And do you see her? You know, if you watch other boa videos, you know, you'll see that most of them are like all over the place. You know, not all of them. Some of them are really super chill like my girl, but most of them are all over the place. And people are, you know, constantly hand over hand over hand. This girl has never been that way. None of my boas are. I just had Roxy out. You know, I mean, you go on your experiences and I'll go on what I know. 
No, and I know a little bit of something about nothing too. No, I'm 51 years old. I ain't some 12 year old. I'm not some 20 year old and I'm not shitting on anybody that's 20 or, or whatever, how old you are. But I'm saying I've, I've been around, you know, I've been, I've lived half a life already. And I've loved animals my entire life. So I'm only going to do what I think is best for my animals. I don't do what's best for me. I want them to be happy. When in return, if they're happy, that means that every time I have them, I'll, we are going to have a wonderful experience just like I show here on these videos. There isn't anything happening off video that you don't see happening in these videos. These are how my interactions are with my snakes every time. I couldn't shoot 90 something videos and not have one act out, you know, at least once. Capone, he acted out. Remember he come flying out of there one in one video and he's never done that. You know, but it was just one of those things. He didn't get me, but, you know, but he's a sweetheart too. He's never been like that. And he's never been food aggressive. Don't move your snakes to feed. Do not move your snakes to feed. There's absolutely no reason to move your snakes to feed. You're actually going to stress them out more by moving them. And after the fact that they've ate and you've got to handle them again, nine times out of 10, they're still in food mode. So yeah, it's best just to feed them where they're at. They don't get food aggressive, cage aggressive, uh, you know, enclosure aggressive. I feed all my snakes in their enclosure. And you see, I don't have any snakes that get aggressive because they think that, because I handle them all the time. I'm not just going in there cleaning and feeding. So to them, when the tub opens up, they don't know what's going on. They don't have it in their head. Oh, I didn't go to the bathroom, so I'm going to, I'm being fed, Be, you know. She going to go in for me this time? Probably not. Probably not. But it's never an issue, as you can see. Yeah, she doesn't want to go in. She don't normally fight me like that. But normally once I get her down over like that, she'll go right in. But look, can you see? Look how pretty she is. She's got wicked maroons down her side, but it does not show up in this video for some reason. Super maroons. See how nice and slow she's going back? No. And when they're coming out to me, they'll be coming out that slow. If they're if they're roaming, they're gonna come they're gonna come you know out a lot faster than that. You know, there's a difference between roaming and coming out because they're being social. You know, and snakes can be social. You know, anybody that says that snakes can't aren't social and can't be social, they they uh, they can be a very social animal. Danielle proved it by she takes her snake everywhere in the summertime. You know. So, and she's a vet tech, so, you know, and, and that's actually the vet, she works at the vet, play, at the veterinarian's office that I take my snakes to. And uh, she got a snake from me because when I brought my snakes in, she couldn't believe how well behaved they were because she's seen plenty of other snakes come in there and she said, they didn't act like mine. And I brought Raven in there when I first got her because I want to make sure she didn't have any internal parasites or any parasites of, of any kind, you know. I want to make sure that she was all good. I'll just take this guy, girl out for the sake of the video. You see her? Boom. Reach in, take her out. I'm just doing that for the people that, you know, like talk shit. Uh, like you said, I'm not saying that, you know, everybody ought to not, you know, you don't, shouldn't tap train your boas. I haven't. I've told people that just because I do it doesn't mean that you shouldn't. I definitely still recommend, you know, somebody tap training their boas. I just don't want to, you know, I don't want to. And if I get bit, it's on me, but I'm not going to tell somebody else not to 
to tap train, you know, because I want everybody to have a good experience. I want everybody to have good experiences like I do with my boas. And look how nice and calm and chill and, you know, look at her just move around. Boa constrictor. You know, like I said, my boas to me are more act like ball pythons and my ball pythons kind of act like what my, you know, like my boas do. They all act about the same. They're all super chill. They all move around. You know, but they're not runny. They're not trying to get away from me. They're just moving around, checking stuff out. You know. And I really just want to shoot these videos to document, you know, my stuff. And when I'm gone, I, you know, these videos will still be there for my family to watch. You know, I, I really wish there was more videos, you know, of, of, people that have passed away that are gone now in my life that you know VHS I mean that's a joke I mean, nobody's gonna watch VHS and you can't even watch VHS anymore and normally all of our home videos were VHS you know and now it's nice to have platforms that you can actually like Instagram I put my snakes on there for the same reason I just want to have a platform that actually will save all this stuff you know, and then I, I can go back over and look at myself later on. Because this girl has changed wicked since when I first got her. She's an IMG, Hypo Jungle Pastel. And she was way lighter than she is now. She's super dark on her sides and stuff now. You know. And she's a sweetheart. A big old sweetheart. Well, she's not huge, but. She's bigger than she was when I first got her three years ago put it that way and this girl fights me going back every time and then we're gonna we'll put her back and then I'm gonna end this video actually I'm gonna end this video with her <laughs> all right I hope this video helped somebody you know if the power goes out that's what I recommend doing if you don't have a generator but obviously the best thing to do, the best thing is to have a generator you know especially if you've got animals like this my lizards my savannah monitor and all that you know, it was, it was nice being able to keep all their enclosures on and their heat mats on and their, their, for my lizards, my, you know, for my Savannah Mari, it was nice having her, her, uh, you know, daylight, her basketball bond and her daylight, her UVB bulb on and, you know, it was, and have her heat, her belly heat on, you know, during, during the power outages, you know, so, but anyway. This is it. I just rambled on pretty much. I didn't really stay on top of it. I meant to do a whole video of what I would do, but I, I that's pretty much what I did. When I when the power went out here, that's what I did. So and uh, it worked for me. I hope it will work for you. And okay, so everybody's got power back now. I've got power back now, so we're gonna have a good day. It's uh Friday. We got three days before Christmas, four days before Christmas, I guess. And uh, I hope everybody has a good Christmas because I don't know if I'll get to shoot a video before Christmas. We got, you know, kids and grandkids coming over, you know, doing the family thing. And uh, my son's coming Saturday and then her two daughters are coming Sunday. And so we're going to be kind of busy here. But anyway, I hope everybody has a good Christmas. And uh, has a happy new year, just in case I don't get a video out, I'm going to try, but you never know. But anyway, remember, if you can't be good, be good at it. Cheers.